Pisces, I like long walks on the beach and collecting baseball cards. And I love rock and roll music. <laughs> okay. Awesome, I'm Rob. I'm uh, Sagittarius. That's all you need to know. I'm Steve. I'm a Taurus and very passionate. <laughs> I'm Pete and I'm an Aquarius and I have no idea what that's supposed to mean. <laughs> I'm Ben and I'm an Aries. We're all different sides. <laughs> but we may have to break up now. <laughs> <laughs> Conductor, so music was always around. The time that we were growing up in the, in the 70s was a magical time for rock and roll, and uh, you know people like David Bowie or uh, I mean you name it um, were mythical creatures, and I wanted to learn how to run with those animals. Similar for me, like I grew up, my my uh, grandfather was a composer. He was actually an English teacher, but in his spare time he composed musicals and whatnot. And um, I was adopted, so that was my adoptive family, but I grew up with just like classical music just blaring at maximum volume all the time. Years later, when I was trying to get naturalized so I could stay in England, <clears throat> I was trying to figure out if I could find my adoptive grandmother's birth certificate, because she was English, I could get naturalized. Couldn't find that, but my mom sent me a bunch of paperwork, and amongst those things was a little 3 by 5 card that had information about my actual parents, which I'd never seen before. And on it it said, mother, five foot six, blonde, uh, German and Irish, and then it said father, musician. So it is actually in my genetic structure. <laughs> somewhat serious country and bluegrass musician. Um, I never really took to it through those guys so much, but then one day I saw my friend Briggs, who had all these cool Jimi Hendrix records. He uh, had been taking guitar and he knew how to play Stairway to Heaven. Mm -hmm. And I just, I wanted to be able to do that. And, and so I said, Dad, you play guitar, can you teach me some guitar? And he signed me up for lessons. Yeah, I fell into it like most people because it seemed pretty cool. Um, but it wasn't something I was, I was necessarily encouraged to do or really understood even how to get there. Um, but I was around a lot of people that played music and somehow it came up at a certain point that there were some guys playing they needed some to play the bass and that seemed like the easier thing to do, at least amount of strings, at least amount of notes to play. <laughs> so that became, uh, that became my path. So in elementary school, I'll never forget this, they had a band concert, you know, and all the kids had to go and watch the concert during the day. So I'm sitting there, and I don't, I don't know, I might have been in you know, second, third grade, something like that, very young, sitting there in front watching, and I'm focused on this guy playing the clarinet, and it just struck me. It's like, that is the coolest thing ever. <laughs> was I, I wow. joined the band, took clarinet lessons, and uh, that's kind of from there. there. Keep there. Keep you know, the you know, I can't. Yeah. That's that's what I started with. I started. I still have. I still have my third yeah. name. I thought you were saying, then you went and bought your first bomb. <laughs> <laughs> fun about this band uh, is that we tapped into the music of our youth in some way and really embraced um, sort of power pop and and sort of where the, it was a weird fork in the road that happened in the mid 70s where kind of punk broke off on it and the precursor to new wave and 
and then glam and all these different things where there's all this different energy, but, but the core of a lot of that music was really short, good songs. We've, we've spent parts of our lives trying to do something that's so original that it defies, and in a weird way, the most original thing we can do right now because we don't play folk music and um, we don't do EDM or other things like that. And not, nothing, I'm no way I'm knocking against that, but was to just embrace this and there really aren't a lot of other bands I think this. one of the most enabling and li uh, liberating things is when we talked about early on, you know, most bands pivot away from some. If it sounds like something else, we got to change it because it sounds too much. And our thing was, if it sounds like something else, then that must be good. Let's keep going on that track, <laughs> <laughs> un unabashedly, and that's worked. That served us well. a lot of things but it doesn't mean we could execute it well. I mean we are who we are we kind of yeah. yeah. I, when we're together we kind of play role. a certain thing that works for us and so that we we I think we've kind of figured out what we're able to execute well. So you, you always sort of go back to you know what you're good at. So in when I was playing in the Petrols we loved all kinds of music and we would literally like okay we want to be we want to write a song like Curtis Mayfield and it was great to have ambitions that great but not always with the best results mm -hmm. um, and we realized that finally by the end of our career like by the last album we realized that like what we are really good at is writing f fucking pop rock songs and this band <coughs> was the same thing the band that Rob and and Ben had played in before was a whole different thing and then Rob called up and said hey man you want to come down and sing and I was like uh, isn't Ben the singer? And he's like, no, no, no we're, we're doing some new stuff. And I was like, uh, I, and I was flattered, A, B, and kind of apprehensive. And I walk in and Ben goes, do you know any T-Rex? And I'm like, fuck yes, I know T-Rex. And then from there on out, it was just like, let's just write and write songs that are that joyous and that fun. Yeah. And that's kind yeah. of always been our thing is like, make great pop music, you know? this just for art's sake and our own edification and enjoyment and we love that there's a micro community of people out there that enjoy it and I think that we, the fun that we have what we do is contagious and we convert a lot of people when we play live and and it reminds people about how fun music is supposed to be and there was a point where people started taking it all way too seriously like, and this is what it's supposed to be about it's supposed to be about pure expression of energy and the creative process, like we have jobs and families and this is unique to us, this is creative. What we do in this room, we don't need uh, secondary approvals from upper management or <laughs> or anything like that for the songs we write yeah. and uh, and it's just fun. Uh, we're not in danger of becoming a goth band anytime soon. <laughs> hey, it could happen though. Yeah. Yeah. Never One know. never knows. <laughs> I'm sounding so boring. Here, let me get animated. <coughs> Nothing is better, really, than writing something in my head or, you know, at home and bring it in and then have it brought to life. It's like, like, I don't know, it's like taking off or giving, giving something wings. It's like Red Bull. <laughs> <coughs> it's like Red Bull. Yeah. It's like Red Bull trademark brand energy drink. For, for somebody who is as prolific a songwriter as you are, Ben, you aren't too precious about your songs. It's true. Like, if, if we don't aren't crazy about it, he doesn't the issue. Very short attention span. I, 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 I fall in love with them and then I learn to hate them. 
yeah. and then I fall <laughs> back in love with them again. You know, but it's all part of that process. It's like you read a song, you play it. Uh, Steve's a big proponent, and I uh, am thankful for that. That he really feels like songs need to be played live and get the yeah. get a different sort of level of energy in them before you record them. And <clears throat> but they find their own their own place and. It never. It, it's funny sometimes. Like they'll be seventy five percent done, but it's the little things that you add on the last month or two um, that all of a sudden make it click. <laughs> There's always been a trajectory in rock and roll. Some people do it because they want to meet boys or girls. Some people do it because they think they're going to get rich. And some people do it because they can't not do it. And we're kind of like the last men standing in some ways <laughs> of that. Well, I mean, Seattle actually has, <coughs> and maybe some of this sort of disappeared in the 90s, but when I was first here, I mean, the way I met Mark Arm and Mudhoney was he tapped on my shoulder and I turned around and he said, said, give me a boost. And I'm yeah. like, what? And I went like this. And he stepped and he would fly over my head onto the stage. And I was like, what the fuck? And then he, he got down and I tapped him on the shoulder. I said, give me a boost. <laughs> and he threw me on stage. <laughs> and there was always this rich community of people who loved punk rock. Yeah, it's kind, of the, it's kind of the island of misfit toys here in Seattle. That it was <laughs> off in the middle of nowhere for a long time. Nobody came here. Yeah. And so if a band came here like... Everybody went and everybody went fucking crazy. Yeah. Like one thing that's always impressed me about Seattle is, you know, growing up in Cincinnati, there was the jockey club, but there really wasn't anything else. And in college, there was like a bar that bands could play at and nothing else. There is maybe three <coughs> bands. But in Seattle, there's a lot of musicians and there's a lot of clubs. And even if you're new, young, starting out, trying to find a gig, there's small places you can play. There's medium-sized places you can play. There's big places you can play. There's resources. There's places go to go to meet people who are musicians, and it's a very there's a huge amount of music and a great music community here. Like if you're a musician, it's a great place to be. You know, we have the highest concentration of LGBTQ people uh, per capita in the U.S. I mean, just like all these things, we're progressive in all these different political ways. We've got water. We've got you know, to your point, we have the mountains and the ocean. We have, we have so much stuff, and it's hard not to get a little jaded sometimes. But just like two nights ago, I'm sitting in my, I'm sitting outside on this beautiful 80 degree day in April, which is maybe another issue with global warming. <laughs> but there's just no place like it. I mean, the air is clear. <clears throat> you're looking up. There's trees. There's all this sort of stuff. So, like I said, I mean, it, for me, moving here and staying here, half of it was the music, and half of it was the backpacking. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, you can't see his clarinet in this picture. <laughs> <laughs> I don't really want to see his clarinet. You know what I'm talking about? 